Question 9. An insulated tube is filled with a large number n of least spheres, each of mass m. The tube is inverted s times so that the spheres completely fall to an average distance l each time. The temperature of the spheres is measured before and after the inversions and the restaurant change and the resultant change in temperature is delta t. So what is the specific heat capacity of lead? So in this question, you have to think what accident what physically happens in the question. So we have this. We have this tube that has ton of least spheres in that one. We just think as like a lot of least spheres in this bunch of things. And then you flip it. So each time you flip it, the this least sphere will fall out. For an obvious reason, because we are in the real world and there's a gravitational force acting on this on this least sphere, so it falls down. And when it falls down, we flip it again. We keep doing this. And then they and then the equation measure the temperature inside the least spheres and it's changed by delta t. So basically these least spheres is are uh, heat up. So what happened in the physics perspective is that each time this falls down, the when when the least spheres fall down see it there is a change in potential energy. And this change in potential energy leads to the creation of the heat energy into the inside of the lead. So now we can write an equation. The equation is the change in potential energy change so the change the potential energy that is changed is the mass of the all these spheres all of the least sphere all these spheres times by the gravitational constant acceleration times by the height that each time change so if we have to, if we really calculate this in detail we have to calculate for each number of the each spheres and what is the distance for each sphere? But in this case, it, it, the question is given as the average distance, L. So we can just safely assume that on the average, every, every least sphere falls out at the same distance, which is L. And as I said that, because this mass is the all least sphere, so you can so it's intrinsically times by n. So we just leave it at that. That we just know that it's all the all the mass, all the sphere. So this m is not the same as the question in in the question m. Okay. All the sphere times by g is times by l, but we flip it s times. So there is this change for s number of times. And next, the heat energy. So the heat energy is created to all of the lead okay all of the lead times by this specific heat of the lead okay and times by the change in temperature which is given by delta t now we look at this what do we know yes we know so the first thing that we have to notice is that these two terms are the same mass because there are n number of terms, the n number of leads if we want to call that and there are each mass m, this is also the same things. But from the physics we say we can see that these are the same materials, same number of materials, same, just same, it's just same mass, same material. So we can just eliminate it. We don't even have to go to this kind of factor factorization at all because we know that it's the same material it's the same it's the same substance that we are consider so we have we know gravitational constant we just leave it at g because in the answer is just leave at the constant l is given by this equation s is also given by the equation s times what we want to find is this 
capacity, specific capacity of heat of the lead, and the change in temperature is given by delta T. So now it's just easy. We just move everything on the one side. So we have specific capacity of the lead is G times L times S divided by delta T, which is the answer B. Thank you very much.